Hola. Um, I think good morning. It will be afternoon in a few minutes. Uh, this session is going to be on analyzing performance in the cloud. And um, your, present, your presenters uh, this afternoon will be myself, Nicholas Wakou. I work for Dell, uh, Dell EMC. And um, yep. Alex Cross. Yeah, and I'm a senior performance engineer with uh, Red Hat, and I work primarily on OpenStack. Right, so today's session is basically going to be on tools. Um, tools for measuring performance in the cloud, tools for monitoring um, performance in the cloud, and then we are going to look at uh, Spec Cloud uh, benchmark and as a tool for actually measuring and monitoring performance in the cloud. And then we also see how we can use those tools to characterize performance in the cloud. And then we'll have some tuning tips that we shall be able to uh, bounce off with you. Um, we'll try to make this um, a, an interactive session, uh, but we do have a lot of um, material to share with you. It looks like it might be best for us to whiz through the presentation and then uh, we can have questions at the end of the, of the session. And, um, and then please, when you ask the questions, uh, feel f uh, make sure that they are precise and to the point so that we can uh, accommodate as many as we can. And the other thing is that at the end um, of it all, uh, we, there is a raffle. Uh, some of you could have picked the raffle ticket. Uh, just make sure that you stay at the end to collect your prize. Otherwise, if you go walk away, uh, some of us might take it. Okay, um, without much ado, uh, defining the cloud, I think we all have, definitely we are all advanced and expert users of the cloud, but that's the reason why we all have different definitions and versions on what we think a cloud should be or what a cloud is. Um, I know you all have your favorite definitions and about what a cloud should be, but for, this, for purposes of this discussion, we are going to limit ourselves to, to the cloud as defined by the National Institute, Institute of Standards and Technology. And based on that, uh, we will also be, the, the, character, the cloud characteristics that we are going to call out will also be those as defined by NIST. So without much ado, let's get into performance measuring tools and Alex. Sure, so um, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about this tool, it's called Rally. Uh, it's, in the, it's an official OpenStack project. Um, it can run as an app or as a service. So when you run it as an app, you're just running it as a CLI from your, uh, wherever you install it, if you want to benchmark from directly on your, your, your cloud itself, if you install it on a controller, or if you uh, install it on another separate machine, perhaps you want the horsepower there. Um, it provides verification, uh, so you can verify through Tempest. Uh, you can benchmark um, various control plane services. It provides some profiling. You can do reports through it, so it'll provide you reports through HTML or through JSON as well. Um, you can assign an SLA to the benchmarks as well, so it'll, uh, you can set up the SLA such that it'll stop benchmarking, hopefully before your cloud hits the brick wall, because once you hit the brick wall, you, obviously nobody likes to have to go back and try to debug what, how to fix it or how to get the cloud running back again. Um, lastly, it's highly pluggable. So, uh, the excellent thing about Rally is you can write your own plugins, so you can use those plugins, or you can use the plugins that are already in there as well. So, next tool I want to talk about was PerfKit Benchmarker. Uh, it's an open source um, living benchmark framework. This was originally open sourced by Google. Um, it integrates with many different cloud providers, so uh, as you can see, 10 plus cloud providers, OpenStack being one of them. Uh, it has many benchmarks, 34 plus benchmarks. Uh, there's a pretty large community involvement there. Um, it uses the CLI tools 
for those existing clouds. So you would have to install those tools on the machine that you intend on running PerfKit Benchmarker from. It allows results to be published uh, to BigQuery. Um, there's actually an open um, PR to publish to Elasticsearch as well, I saw. I think somebody has a talk here later this afternoon about that. Um, the other major thing about PerfKit Benchmark is it also captures the cloud elasticity with the benchmark results. So rather than just capturing the steady state of where your benchmark's running, grabbing those results, and that's what you're getting to publish, it'll also grab the run times of the, uh, the benchmark itself. So the, the time it took to provision the instances, the time it took to install the tooling it maybe needed. Um, so that's nice because obviously with cloud, we want to know what the elasticity is. So along with PerfKit Benchmarker, there's a separate project as well that's open source, and it's the PerfKit uh, Explorer. So this is a dashboarding and performance analysis tool. Um, it exists as an app that you can host inside of Google's App Engine. So in that fashion, you need to have an account there and set that up. Um, it only integrates with the, the BigQuery backend data store. Uh, there's multiple chart options. You can compare run to run. Um, you can compare different flavors. You can set whatever you want on the Y and X axes. So that's really nice because you can build whatever comparison you want to build there. Right. Um, CloudBench. CloudBench is um, yet another uh, benchmark driver and uh, harness, uh, just like um, uh, PuffKit and, uh, and the others. So basically, it's a framework that will automate uh, your cloud scale evaluation and benchmarking. And really, in, in its simplest form, all it really does is it initiates the creation of, uh, of instances, and, and then it uh, submits configuration plans, how the test should be done to the cloud manager. And then at the end of the test, it will collect your logs and performance data, and then it will destroy the instances if that is what you want it to do. And at a very high level, it's basically, um, it's got three drivers. It's got a baseline driver. It's got uh, an elasticity and scalability driver, and then it's got a report generator. And then it's able to download uh, the kind of workloads that you want to use for testing and measuring your cloud. So another tool I wanted to bring up here was Browbeat. And this is a Red Hat uh, tool. It's now under the OpenStack uh, namespace as well. Uh, it's not an official project, but it's under the Big Tent. Uh, it's really an orchestration tool, so it can orchestrate multiple OpenStack workloads. It really assists with installation of the tooling, as well as um, installation of a lot of the analysis tooling, such as um, uh, monitoring the performance, like the system performance of your cloud. So we'll, it includes playbooks to set all of that up and to have your entire over cloud or OpenStack cloud um, to be monitored. Uh, it also assists with the setup of our results analysis side, so that's Elasticsearch and Kibana. So um, it really combines all of those tools into one area, makes it a little bit easier for you to install all of that. So helps you with installing workloads, gathering metrics, and results all, in, all into one tool. Um, the other big thing is it really provides a whole bunch of dashboards as well, and that's really big because if you've ever installed like Grafana, you'll know that you have to build all the dashboards yourself. Um, and it can be very sometimes complicated to understand how your metrics are being captured and what they really mean. It also includes dashboards that we have with Kibana for results analysis as well. So here's just an example visualization of the results we have in Kibana. And in this instance, we're comparing, and I realize it's, yeah, it's pretty difficult to see what the, what's there, but on the, the bottom axis we have is the, the concurrency rate, and this is a, a set number of um, rally benchmarks that were run against this cloud, and we're comparing UUID and Fernet tokens. So 
But rather than overlaying the two graphs on top of each other, we just put them side by side. I uh, found it to be very busy if I tried to put the line graphs on top of each other, which can be done, um, but you really need to kind of limit your scope of how you want to look at your results. On the systemetric side, we use Grafana. So this is a visualization of Grafana showing you CPU utilization, memory, and then per process right there on Keystone as well. And that's a number of benchmarks um, as well that have been run. And you can literally see when each benchmark ran, we do have a little bit of a sleep quiescence period of about five seconds between each one. OK. Um, so Spec Cloud IAS 2016 benchmark is a new uh, benchmark that was uh, released this year from Spec. And um, what it does is it measures performance of uh, infrastructure of a service uh, for clouds. It measures both the control plane and the data plane and uses um, workloads that um, real customer workloads. Uh, to, uh, and, and as you'll see later on, it, uh, we do, it uses workloads like K-means, um, YCSB, and uh, a host of several other workloads that are part of the cloud bench suite. And then it measures mainly elasticity, scalability, and provisioning time. And there's a number of other uh, secondary matrices that you can call out. But those are the three that are basically used uh, to, in order to publish your results. So um, when you look at the way um, scalability and, uh, and elasticity is uh, viewed, at least from the benchmark point of view, it's kind of like you are climbing a mountain, uh, an infinitely high mountain. And uh, scalability is really how high you can go. Ideally, you just keep on climbing forever. And elasticity is the steps that you take. It's like every step that you take uh, ideally should be the same. Now, in real life, we know that you, at some point, you will get tired and you'll stop. And then your steps will never really be the same. And so that's the same analogy in the cloud is that um, you keep adding on, load, you keep loading the, the cloud until you start getting errors. And for elasticity, um, you are, trying to make sure that every, as you add, as you add on the load, performance would, remains consistent. So basically that's the way in which um, scalability and elasticity is viewed um, by this benchmark. So what it really does is that it measures application instances. So it has got this notion of application instances. First of all, you have instances which are your virtual machines. Then you collect a bunch of those instances and make sure that they work together in a cluster to run a particular workload, that becomes your application instance. So it, it, the scalability is basically how many of those instances that you can load and run successfully without errors. And, and then, the, so basically it's measuring the scalability and the elasticity of the cloud under test. Now, one thing that if, people sometimes forget is that they, they, they think that it, should be, it's a, that it should be a measure of instance density, but it's not. It does not measure how many instances you can um, load on the cloud. It's actually measuring how many application instances you can load. Big difference. So, um, but you can use uh, these spec cloud instances to individually stress uh, the, the cloud under test, and I will sh we shall talk about that when it comes to uh, performance characterizations. And so the benchmark has got two phases. There is the baseline phase where you are just running um, one, inst one application instance. So for instance, you have a K-means application instance. You run it all on its own. You have like five runs. And that, the baseline phase is used to collect the kind of statistics and data that is used 
in the elasticity and scalability phase. So in the baseline phase, you just run one single application instance. To raise it will be k-means, and then after that you run YCSB, and then after you have completed with the baseline phase, you run the elasticity phase, and that is where you start loading all these instances, k-means and YCSB, until such a point that you start getting errors, or rather you as SLA, service level agreement, you know, kicks in because you're not getting the right throughput and things like that, which really brings me to the next slide, which how does it stop? If you look at the analogy of the mountain, at what point do you show that you cannot continue anymore? So the, the stopping conditions are if 20% of the application instances fail to provision, that is a flag for stopping. If 10% of them have errors, that's a condition for stopping. You can also set the maximum number of application instances. Just if you look at our knowledge, you can say that I'm going to climb up 10,000 feet after 10,000 feet no more. So in this case, you can also set and say I'm going to run only 10 application instances and then after that the benchmark will stop. And then if you have any QoS violations, in other words, you are, um, K-means uh, takes longer than uh, the, than the threshold to, to complete. Uh, YCSB throughput is probably lower than a third of the baseline uh, figures. All those will be stopping conditions and the, the benchmark will stop. So at the end of it all, there is a report that is generated and that report will give you uh, the primary metrics which are scalability, uh, elasticity and the mean instance provisioning time. And then it gives you a host of other primary uh, metrics and the reasons why your benchmark stopped and all sorts of things. It's, um, uh, and again, all this information is available on the Spec Cloud uh, website. So right now, there are two published results um, of the benchmark. They were all published this year and they are all from Dell and we are expecting other um, companies to publish results on this benchmark. So, back to measuring tools. So one performance measuring tool that's included with OpenStack is the uh, telemetry project. Um, most of you know it as Solometer. Um, it's obviously a major project. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, more recently, we've, in the telemetry side, we've actually switched the back end to uh, Noki. Um, just wanted to point that out there. So multiple uh, applications can leverage Solometer at this point to review performance metrics. Um, one thing that I've, I've found with, uh, with the telemetry services that we have inside OpenStack is they're generally focused a little bit more on billing than they are maybe from a performance engineering aspect of the granularity I might want to get out of my metrics might be a little bit, uh, a little bit, a lot smaller, essentially. Uh, so another set of tooling you can use is uh, Collect D, Graphite, Grafana. Uh, this is a pretty uh, somewhat pluggable uh, setup where you could change, you could potentially change Graphite and carbon with a different data store if you wanted, depending on how you want to store your metrics, it just will affect your dashboarding. Um, so I just wanted to highlight this stack as the stack that we've used. Um, Collect D is really the daemon that just sits at your nodes and it's gonna collect metrics, aggregate them to some degree, normalize them, and then be able to send them off to carbon. Um, carbon will then store them in its cache and write them to whisper files as well as keep it in the cache. Graphite is the web front end, and you can use Graphite itself without another dashboarding framework or another dashboarding tool. Um, it does become a little bit uh, difficult to use at times. It's a very busy interface, has a lot of items on there. Um, so one of the ways to make it a little bit prettier is I use Grafana. And uh, Grafana is a, that's the, the uh, screen scrape you can see right there. Uh, and you can see our visualization of CPU, memory, as well as disk um, on there. Yeah, um, so Ganglia is, has been around for some time. 
uh, mainly used for hardware-centric metrics. Um, we still use it, although the trend, especially when it comes to the cloud, has been more to do with, um, with the uh, collect dig or fun and other tools. But Ganglia is uh, still uh, very relevant. It's very scalable, um, and it, it's also very, you know, relatively easy to set up, and it tracks a lot of hardware-centric tools. And it's got a very low uh, operational burden. Okay, so um, performance characterization. So why do we, why are we interested in performance characterization? Mainly, we want to be able to understand the behavior of the cloud under load. That's the more main reason why, at least at Dell, um, why we, we do uh, performance characterizations. Because most of the times, you, you may not know what happens uh, as you stress the cloud. And some of the things that we track, if, for instance, is uh, provisioning time. Um, uh, if I keep adding instances, um, uh, what is the impact on performance? And particularly, if those instances have workloads, if they are running workloads, um, how will they, how will, how will they um, uh, perform under load? So uh, provisioning time, the way we look at it is that you have the instance provisioning time, which is you, are, you request the cloud manager to, to orchestrate a bunch of instances. And uh, the, the only, so the provisioning time is actually the time when that request was made and the time when the instances are able to report uh, or to respond to a netcat um, probe on port 22. Uh, now for application instances, um, it's the time when the request was made to create the instance and the time when the AI or the application instance reports that it's ready to do business or to run the tests. Now, um, there are several tools you could use for uh, characterizing provisioning time. Rally is, is another one of those very good tools. Now, we use SpecCloud for doing that mainly because of the reporting facility. Um, you can run a bunch of, uh, of those, um, you can orchestrate a bunch of instances, and then later on you'll get a good report to tell you how long it took, the average uh, instance provisioning time. So that's provisioning time. Now, there are, if you want to look at the I.O. characteristics, the first thing you have to do is to understand what the capacity of your I.O. is. And there's a bunch of um, uh, good resources on the internet on how you can do that. Um, they are these two um, uh, sites uh, that I, you know, that I have in the paper that uh, can be good way for you to know how to get the limits of your PCIe and then of your SAS uh, controllers. But basically, if you, to use uh, spec cloud uh, for characterization of the network and the I.O., um, what you can do is you can, again, th through the tool, through spec cloud, you can vary the number of seeds for YCSB, and then, or you can actually increase the number of YCSB records, and you can keep doing that, keep loading them until you hit whatever limit that you can get. And uh, the other thing you can do is that if you are using CloudBench, CloudBench has got FIO, uh, and a number of you may have used FIO, so again, within the same environment, you can uh, run an FIO, uh, test and that will give you will be able and then you keep loading um, you know using FIO and that should be able to give you some good characteristics about your uh, your your what about your network and IO and CloudBench also has got NetPath so but, and then the other thing is that you, it is possible for you to look at the, your management networks look at your data networks and you can use a bunch of monitoring tools to assess how, um, how your network is actually responding. You can use Ganglia, you can use CollectD, you can use uh, Linux tools, uh, the number of them are there, it just really depends on which one you're most comfortable with. Uh, CPU is uh, quite important. Now, you can also use SpecCloud to characterize your CPU. 
Um, the recommended way is for you to run the K-means um, workload. K-means is very, very CPU intensive. You should be able to load your, your cloud within a very short time just by running K-means and then orchestrating as many virtual, I mean, application instances or, yeah, as, as many of them as possible. So all you have to do is to vary the number of Hadoop slaves. Uh, you can also increase the sample size or the number of dimensions. Lots of opportunities for you to ramp up the CPU. And one of the things that you'll be looking at while you're doing that is uh, looking at things like the CPU user time, CPU uh, system time, IO wait time, IRQ time, all those statistics will be available to you. And they, in their, in, by, in their, by themselves, will give you a very good picture of uh, the bottlenecks within your system and things like that. So you have to get the whole story together, look at your network, look at your CPU to be able to know how your cloud is actually uh, responding under pressure. Now, for scalability and elasticity, that is exactly what Spec Cloud was crafted for. It gives you a good result on what the scalability of your cloud is. In other words, how many application instances it could load and how consistent the performance was uh, during the loading. Now, this, as you can see here, scalability is 29.5, which is a numberless score and then it shows you that you ran 20 application instances. And then elasticity is 79 per 70, about 72 percent, which is really a measure of, okay, by the end, but at, at when you were at 20 application instances, your performance had dropped to, at, to about 72 percent. So that's a measure of what that will show you. Um, and again, you can vary the number of application instances, and then you monitor what the, uh, how scalability and elasticity is impacted. Okay, so uh, tuning tips. Um, tuning the cloud, and I'm, I'm sure since you're all expert users, you, this is something that you do probably for a living. Um, but again, this is really basically for us just to have uh, a discussion of, okay, I'll just show you what we do or we have been doing, and, and you guys, I'm sure, have your own uh, experiences. But one thing, the way we approach it from Dell is you have to tune your underlying infrastructure, make sure that it is really running the way it should run. You have to run with the, your latest BIOS and firmware revs, and you have to do the appropriate uh, RAID and JBoard settings. All those things are still very important even in a cloud environment. And all the things that would give you the big performance at the OS and the, and the BIOS level are still very important. And we always make sure that those are done as part of the, de uh, as part of the deployment process. Now, um, this chart here just shows you, um, I'm, I'm just going to show you what we did um, as a way of showing uh, you know, uh, the power of optimizing your cloud. So what we did here is that we ran a big data workload on OpenStack. And, and uh, first of all, we ran that big data workload on, uh, on, uh, on, on, on physical servers, uh, which is in this case number one, the blue one, and that actually served as our, our, what our, as our reference uh, platform. Uh, so we ran on big data, sorry, on on-premise on physical servers, and then after that, we, we ran on a cloud. And we started optimizing up the point whereby the performance on the cloud almost matched the performance on physical uh, servers. And we started off from the point, no, by default, we started off at 0 0.19 of the of the of the uh, of the bare metal performance, and then with lots of um, optimizations, we ended up getting to very close to that on bare metal. So optimizing, optimizing, tuning, those are very powerful things that I think performance engineers enjoy doing, 
and, and they can actually make a very big difference um, to your performance. So one of the things that we did was we had to get the right instance configuration and uh, we actually, we ran about five, we tried about five instance configurations and settled on one that would give us the best performance. And then we also managed to determine how many instances per physical server we should be running. And that we actually determined that you, if you run with four instances and, and if, they, if, they, if they are taking up as many uh, taking up as many of the resources as possible, that's your sweet spot. Then having done that, we tried to see what we could do if we could get away with oversubscription. Oversubscription is something that is used quite a lot in the cloud. One thing we found out that actually don't oversubscribe if performance is your key consideration. In all cases, it is bad. The, but if you have to oversubscribe, you can do that on CPU, but not on memory. And then the other thing that we did was to, we have to decide whether we should be using um, um, uh, self-shared storage or, or we should be using um, uh, local storage. So we found out that one, if you are going to use safe, you have to decide about what kind of a replication you are going to use. Now, if you have a, a high level application which has its own replication, uh, mechanism, you might be better off turning off the safe uh, replication. Now, that's something, again, for you to decide as a user or as an administrator, but that should only happen if you have other ways of, um, of, of, of replicating your data. In, uh, in this case, we had, uh, we were able to use the application's uh, replication mechanism and that actually gave us almost a 30% performance improvement just by making sure that we are running with safe replication one. And then after that, we switched to local storage. We configured our cloud to use local storage rather than using safe shared storage. And we got an additional 22% performance improvement. So we, that was really one of the big game changers um, for us. And then we attempted to use NUMA nodes and just made sure that we were making our instances to be aware of the NUMA to topology. That didn't go that well. We only got a 2% performance improvement. We could have got more out of it, but we didn't have enough time to research further into why we're only getting 2%. We figured that it, was, it had to do with the hypervisor overheads but again, we, we, this is an area that we are going to research even further. Then the other thing that we did was disk pinning. Again, making sure that the instances are aware of the underlying I.O. That gave us um, a 15% performance improvement. And after that point, our performance was almost at par with the performance um, on, the, on bare metal. So we were at 94% of bare metal performance. We, having moved from 19% to 94%, that shows you the power of optimization and of tuning. You can actually get there. And we're very confident that um, there's a lot of areas that we can still go back to, tune them, and we should be able to um, match, and if not, exceed the performance on bare metal. So on the control plane side of your, your cloud there, um, <clears throat> some of the, one of the more major issues we found on the control plane side was inconsistencies in, uh, in uh, uh, the, the tuning of your process or thread count of workers. Uh, so in this example here, I'm highlighting uh, one keystone worker versus uh, multiple count all the way up to uh, the logical core count of this um, particular environment. And the red bar is one worker, and then the other ones is 6, 12, 18, and 24. Um, Kibana kind of mixed up the ordering, so it's not exactly perfect, but you can just see with the red bar how dramatically different the performance looks amongst the worker counts there. Um, and this is API response time, so lower is better. And, and 
in this particular visualization, we have min, max, 50th percentile, 90, 95th, and 99th. So you want to look among a wide range of percentiles as well as the min and max, get a feeling of where the distribution of your response times are. And some of the places that we've seen this is uh, most notably Keystone, and Keystone being your authentication process is going to be huge. So you need that. That's, it's called Keystone because it's the Keystone of your cloud. So um, you, you ought to make sure that that's tuned. Uh, other places we've seen this is Neutron Workers, uh, Glance Workers, and Noki API Workers as well. Another uh, control plane side issues we've seen before has been um, uneven controller usage. Um, so actually the second controller in here, so the middle graph, is the one that has uh, more CPUs and it's actually picking up more utilization from Nova. So it's picking up more of the jobs here. And one thing I wanted to highlight with this is with using Grafana, Collecti, and Graphite, you can start visualizing what the utilization is in your cloud at real time. So um, you can start running your benchmarks or your testing and start getting that feedback instantaneously using this. On the, uh, with Triple O, on the installation side, we look at the uh, installing just the overcloud itself as well. Um, and we've seen some significant usage of heat using the memory. And um, you can also see the length of time it takes to provision as well, where the line terminates is when it finished. Um, but the main takeaway here is the more compute nodes we were provisioning, we we're seeing more utilization of memory. So it was about one gigabyte of memory used for every other, uh, for every 10 or so compute nodes. Uh, deployment timings, we tried to optimize this as well. Um, compared to OSP8, it was uh, much, uh, not definitely not as well compared to this. So, but you can see some of the tunings we tried and the differences in the timings as well. Um, where it shows one, it means that that deployment failed or took too long for us to actually count that measurement, so we just didn't even show it. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it failed. It means that we just, at that point, we cut it off. And conclusion. So you want to define what you're measuring. Um, you want to really figure out what metrics are most important for you. What's your objective with your cloud? Uh, you want to use a variety of tooling, um, such as the tools we have there, Rally, PerfKit Benchmarker, CloudBench, SpecCloud, uh, Solometer. Uh, you want to have tooling that measures your, your, system, uh, your system metrics as well. Don't just take the results data and look at that without understanding what occurred. Because if you run a bunch of benchmarks and then you say, hey, I know Keystone can perform like this, but you just isolated that component, you don't know how it works as a whole. So you really want to be able to look at both sides of, of this. You want to look at the results data and you want to look at the system performance as well. Because if it does something totally unreasonable, like consumes all of the resources in your cloud, then you know that that's not really a true point that you can hit because you can't support other services if they're shared amongst your nodes. Uh, most importantly, though, you want to gather and analyze your, your data. So don't just start blindly at, uh, applying tunings. Make sure you gather the data on your cloud and your environment and your setup, and you look at that data yourself as well. And then apply tunings that make sense based on the analysis of that data. Here's some additional information. And then I think we're, uh, we're on to Q&A now. So I'll leave that right. up there if you guys want to. So any questions? I think we do have a set Terry as well if you have a question. Um, oh, <laughs> I thought there were some microphones there. But are there any questions? OK, yes, please. I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? What is performance? On which? By the way, you want to stay behind to get your raffle. So, it? yeah, as he looks. 
or this one? Sorry, um, what was the question again? What did you measure the perform? What was the performance comparison? He's curious about how that's one. And then okay, these. so the one is the okay now the benchmark that we ran was a big data benchmark from the TPC. We ran it on bare metal, uh, physical servers, and we got some performance. Then we ran it on the cloud. Um, the green is we were actually running it um, on local storage without NUMA nodes, and the purple, we were running it uh, again on local storage using NUMA nodes, and we used the bare metal performance to normalize the performance of the others. Right. Yeah, right. So th these are, again, we are using just relative numbers rather than giving you the absolute performance. Any other question? Yes, please. Okay. Something you may want to pull up. Right, and good. The thing that I would like to say is like, mm. word of, like warning or like an experience that I have made when tuning our, our CPC sources at CERN is like um, there are lots of knobs that you can turn. And if you actually run benchmarks, and it looks like it's getting better, but some of the things are actually dangerous to change, and you only find out much later. So, one of the examples that we had is we switched off. And our benchmark gave us a boost of, I don't know, I don't remember, 8 or 10 percent. But later on with the application, it suffered big time. So you also, when you like change tuning options, you have to be very careful that you don't shoot yourself in the foot later on. You have to rerun the application to make sure that the application uh, doesn't suffer on specific use cases. In our case, we didn't notice this because it was a very specific use case and less than 5 percent of the workload actually ran into this. Right. Yeah, and, and those are good tips. And typically what we do is, this was an investigation. Now for this to be rolled into our normal reference architecture, we have to, we go through a, a slew of uh, QA testing to make sure that uh, our solution and uh, use cases are not in any way impacted. And by the way, this was, this was just like the beginning uh, of, the, of a series of investigations that we are going to be doing, and we had very limited time to get this done. Um, we are likely to have uh, another go at it, and we shall now go into more detail because we are now more, we have the experience of having gone through something, and we are encouraged by what we saw. The next time, I believe our story is going to be different. I, I don't think it is going to be matching. It will, in many cases, just to show that we could get better numbers on the cloud. Okay, any other question? Uh, yes, and then you next. Mm. The what? The oh, disk pinning. So basically what we're really doing is that we are making the instances to be aware of the disk topology. And, the, and again, there's a way in which you can configure it and so that instead of them using the logical disks, they're actually talking directly to the physical disks. Yeah, that's disk pinning. Um, as opposed to CPU pinning, which was, again, you could talk directly. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want, you want to try? So, 
I'm sorry, so you're asking like which tool to use or? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I'd recommend both. You want the application performance, and you want the uh, you want the system performance, because you want to understand how your application. When I say application, if it's an API service, then you want to know the system performance would be the CPU utilization, your memory utilization, your disk, what it is per each of those instances. You want to know on your underlying hardware. That's what I look at the underlying hardware. I'll capture on the instance if I really need to as well. Does that, does that answer I your think question? the tool, she wants the tool. Oh, the tool. Um, I, so I would, personally, you're asking me an inflated question. I would say browbeat, and I would use the collect D, Grafana, Graphite uh, system for system metrics, um, capture and analysis. By analysis, it's really the end user, so it's really capture, storage, and visualization. You have to do the analysis. <laughs> okay, does that answer your question? Okay. All right. Um, now time for the raffle. You can get out your raffle ticket and... and take home some goodies. No, go ahead. All right. <laughs> All right, uh, number 67, or is it the whole number up here? Oh, no, 67. 67. Nope. Anyone with number 67? <laughs> going once, going twice. All right, let's try again. 94? Nope. All right. I'm gonna have to speed up here. Did you guys get raffle tickets? 74? <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh, 89? Oh, there we go. Okay, we have a winner. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you so much. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you. Thank you.